What is going on, guys? Wiser here, bringing you the recap of the last war for Invicta. Uh, it was against this clan, Elax, Sweden. Uh, hard to, I, I, I didn't tr translate their clan description, but they seemed like a fair play clan. They had a lot of Town Hall 10s. Um, I think a newer, I, I don't know, again, I'm, I'm just kind of speculating based on their attacks because they did have a huge Town Hall 11 advantage. Let's just hop on over here. Let's check this out. 91.87, Invicta comes away with a victory, and it was a good, good victory for Invicta because let's check this out. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 Town Hall 11s. Now, they didn't all have Eagles, but they definitely all had Grand Wardens. Um, and then still one, two, three town hall tens on top of that. We had all but two town hall elevens and four town hall tens. Zerds a ten. Zerds is a ten, isn't he? We're checking this out. Yeah, sorry, my bad. They did get get a triple on Zerds. Good for them. You know he was a nine, right? Just double checking my stuff. No, I'm wrong. It was ten. So I'm an idiot. Clearly, I should do my research ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> Tiger is for sure and I know. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So we had, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six tens and two elevens to their nine elevens and three tens. So really good job for Invicta. Um, gave them hell, cleared those nines really quickly. A lot of nines stepped up and got twos on those tens and gave shots at the elevens. Uh, even got a few two stars on the elevens from nine. So that's that's kind of neat. Uh, again, not having the eagles makes a big difference in town 11 defense. Um, anyhow, is what it is. I did want to mention, uh, I did miss the last recap. Someone had asked me on YouTube, uh, apologies. Uh, I did miss the uh, I want to say this right, uh, Jordy or Gordy Rednecks War versus Invicta. Invicta did lose. It was very similar to this war, maybe not quite as bad, but uh, they did have a huge town hall advantage, um, and they held up. The you know their attacks were really good. They used a lot of good bullies and, and cleaned everything up. And uh, Invicta did take the loss from about the same margin, but the other way. Um, so sorry I missed that recap, guys. Uh, you know the uh, Gordy Rednecks uh, crew. Uh, apologies. Uh, I've just I've said in a few videos recently. I'm I'm really behind on a lot of stuff. Um, and when it comes down to me, you know, taking an afternoon or taking a time to do a video to do a slay my base uh, or something extra for the clan, I had to do a big, I did a, a private recap, which by the way, uh, guys, I'm going to link for the next couple recaps I do. I did a private family skin scrim recap that is not going to be made public. However, I'm sharing the, the unlisted link with my YouTube followers and my Twitter followers. So I'm going to put that for the next couple recaps. I'm going to put that link down below. Check it out. I didn't want to do it's a super long like half hour video just roll through the replays and played a bunch of tunes i didn't want to make it public to everyone kind of like a thank you though to my youtube followers my twitter followers uh letting you guys have access to that um not only do i not like having the, our bases just put out there publicly at all times uh i didn't want to just roll through some music and obviously you cannot have monetized videos on YouTube that have music from other artists. So I just decided, screw it. We're gonna do an unlisted recap. I'm sharing it with you guys. Uh, so check that out. That will be in the comment section as well. Um, and again, apologies to Gordy, uh, Gordy or Jordy Rednecks, however you say it. Um, but yeah, you guys, uh, you guys came through and used your advantage to the best of your abilities and uh, got a very good, good win. I think it was a six or seven or even eight. eight. Again, I'm not sure off the top of my head. Um, win for the uh, Jordy Rednecks over Invicta. Uh, but uh, they bounced right back. Again, it was very disheartening to immediately get matched up with another huge, huge mismatch like this. But you know what? They said, screw it. We're going to give these guys all we got and came through victorious. So fantastic job, everyone. Um, let's just start down at the bottom, very bottom. Robbie hitting number 35. Old school attack style here. Cold-blooded quad Lalo coming in. One goal, right? Something I've talked about in your base building, guys. Look at this. You can drop the one golem. The wizard's kind of on either side. Only got three wizards down here, but he's creating a funnel. Now he does get he does drop the double wizards to make sure that barracks goes down. So it is a bit of a sacrifice. But as long as that barracks goes down, as long as this goes down and the jump is right there, anything he drops right here is just gonna go straight in. His king does kind of look that direction, but doesn't really matter. King goes in, queen is in there. The hound does come out, kind of is a bit of makes a bit of trouble because uh, needs to get that archer queen dead, but no big deal. The queen is now down. 
Um, his queen's going to lock on, rages up that king, just going to finish off this little bit of compartment area here. Uh, the golem barely takes that air defense down. The golem might just finish it off. Uh, queen's going to stand there working on the hound for a bit, but their job is done, right? CC troops are taken care of. Air defense is down. Defensive queen is down. We got four lava hounds for three remaining air defense with 16 balloons. So as long as your deployment is on and the rest of these spells, three hastes and two rage to be precise, are on par, then we're looking good, right? Queen doesn't quite make it through that lava hound, unfortunately. Let's the poison do the work on the last few pups, but he's just going to have to go in and uh, and deal with a few pups uh, working on his uh, balloons. They do lock right onto the lava hound. First, so that's kind of good. Haste goes down, just kind of pushing everything in. That lone Tesla out there gives a little bit of problems because it's out of range, which is a very good Tesla placement. I guess there was an air defense right there, but um, oh, maybe not. I thought I swear I, when I watched this, it started there. It is starts working on these balloons on the side with that pop, so he does lose this stuff before it even gets over the Tesla there. Um, that one does get it just in time. That's right. But everything's kind of working in, right? Rages are down. Haste kind of getting everything in. There's not a lot left to this base. Like this little air defense on the outside is very exposed. So two hounds are now in on there. Probably didn't even need to bring the four lava hounds here, Rob, just because of the Town Hall 8 defenses. Um, I think you could have just went with an extra six balloons or even a few more wizards or something. Hell, even a, a, a second goal. Uh, would have would have worked out because he would have got more of a chunk of this base. But how do you judge that sometimes? Beautiful attack, Robbie. Old school style, two hounds unburst. That's never a good thing when you have two hounds unburst. Um, but when you're going cold-blooded like that, there's so much left of the base, you just kind of get worried. But uh, again, tree stars in the bag for Rob. <laughs> Uh, what else? Got some really nice ones in here for you. Really old school style attacks here. Um, this one is more of a new school style, I should say, but um, this one is just a crazy attack. Look at this army comp. Three golems, six valks. Like that is an insane, like that's the equivalent of four and a half golems right there of troop space. Um, he's got a lava hound on the CC with 10 balloons, which I thought was really neat. So gets the golems all down here. He's going to just start taking out all this trash with his uh, funneling wizards a little close on that one probably didn't need to do that but um, as you can see this golem's getting worked in the middle but these two golems are barely getting touched up here as soon as this cannon goes down they're gonna walk in little uh little delay on that poison there to kind of slow things down golems are working their way in here though so drops those valks the funnel is created there is nowhere for these valks to go except for this core now if you look at this he is already uh, or no he's not but he's already working on one of the three air defense here he has access to all three so clearly the two golems that are left and all those valks and king and queen are all going to definitely definitely get those air defense in there and that defensive queen heal goes down help those valkyries out a little bit boom poison goes down take care of the skelly slows down that queen valks under the heel are just going to get huge value on that expo that queen the air defense is there the the tesla trap is there like just crazy crazy value on this i mean this is what i'm talking about with these old open alleyway bases um not a huge fan man like you just you just got to come up with a plan it's almost like you're you're sectioning off the base for the attacker like look at this one hound and six seven balloons with a couple haste spells and this entire compartment is toast that's it. Boom. Wiz tower. See you later. Boom. Air defense. See you later. And boom. Arch tower. See you later. So he even has those few extra balloons to throw in and help out the kill squad there. One compartment of defense is remaining. Like, pups are all over. So, again, I don't know. Still not convinced on these alley weave style bases. Um, I don't know. Personally, I, I like it old school these days with my base building. Stupid Skype. <clears throat> Expo is the last defense to go down. See you later. Clean up time. Um, I don't know. I've been. I've just gone back to old school base building. Right. Uh, good compartment sizes. I'm not even putting. I, I'm not even really putting dead zones in it. Um, I don't know. I'm having. I'm having success as well. Right. Because you start splitting stuff up, and queen charge is so popular these days i find when you really segregate the sections of your base like that you're just asking for it i mean that wasn't a queen charge there but it was a very different style right it's bring a huge kill squad to take out the 75 percent of the base and then one hound and six balloons are going to take out that that other chamber so i don't know something to think about guys when you're building your bases personally i've been really just enjoying going back to like my old school base designs right nice amount of compartments right size of compartments proper debt proper double giant bombs uh proper air defense placements with mines um you know properly protected queen 
all those things, if you got it, you don't need this huge, crazy alleyway. I don't know. Maybe at first it was throwing people off, but I don't think it is anymore. But, uh, yeah, Deed's throwing, I suppose. Uh, what was it? What number was that? Was that 33? Did I have 32 now? Yeah. Ryan the Great had a six-pack. A lot of guys had six-packs in this war, so really good job, gentlemen. Uh, Ryan's going to go in here with um, pretty much uh, a Penta. Uh, Penta with a Zapquake. Suicide Heroes are going to go in right at this Queen Chamber. Kind of interesting to drop the King before the Giant. Um, I think that was a bit of a mistake. But I did like this uh, this Suicide Hero style here. So uh, one Giant. King goes down. Queen's going to back that up. Does not even bring Wall Breakers. I thought that was cool. A few smash from that King opens it up. Does not get the Queen, but this Queen's about to step up. Rage it up. Bam, bam, bam. Down goes the Queen. Oh, someone's calling me from upstairs. Um, anyhow, <laughs> let's roll through the rest of this. Uh, this this is this section is now taken care of, right? So we got three air defense remaining. We got the defensive queen down. Uh, the CC troops are not pulled out yet, but maybe he knows it's a hound in there, and it's just gonna go in with the penta after this point, anyways. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. About to get a lure. Oh, there's a few archers and a whiz. No, wow, interesting. Very good, uh, good call on that poison there. Um, does not quite get the witches, unfortunately. But if you think about it, to an air attack, who cares about witches, right? Look at those skeletons, just standing there, standing there jerking it. <laughs> I've said that before, right? It's funny when you see a lava hound just sitting over in the corner jerking it. You know, like there's nothing they can do, right? As long as the witches go down. But even a, a witches. Attack does not do anything. So uh, haste go down, right? Just huge value on these loons. Boom. That's why I don't like putting Tesla side by side because one balloon drop takes them both out in one shot. Um, everything is just working through the rest of this base. It doesn't stand a chance. One air defense to, to go. Just got to get the pack of balloons over there. The sweeper's giving them a little bit of trouble, but it doesn't matter. That air defense is locked on. There's no real whiz towers in the range to, to worry about. That last whiz tower goes down. Air defense is down. Really, there's an archer tower, a sweeper, and that is it for this base. Nice freaking job, Ryan. Sexy attack. Seeing a lot more pentas lately, and I think a lot of it has to do, again, with the way these new styles of bases are getting built. I really think people are focusing so much on dead zones, these open alleyway dead zones, um, doing these crazy things with their bases that they're just forgetting about simple fundamentals, right? You're, you, you allowed a king and a queen to take out the defensive queen on their own with no with nothing, no healers, one giant, that's all he used, he didn't even use wall breakers. So something to think about guys, do not, Forget the basics when you are building your bases. Um, Hamilton. <clears throat> Ham brings a pretty cool attack here. Now, it does not go to plan. I, I've, I've talked about this before. Um, I wanted to show this attack. Check out the 13 wall breakers he brings. I thought that was kind of funny. Um, and then but he's got 13 wall breakers, but uh, it doesn't even... He still wall break fails at, at one point. Uh, they are kind of good here. He uses four there and loses a couple of them. So he just waits. There we go. Drops a couple more. I don't know why, Ham. Side note, wait for that Wiz Tower to go down, bud. You just lost nine of your 13 wall breakers, and you still haven't even busted open this wall. So, hey, why not? Let's just throw the last two in there. We're going to open it up and then have the queen walk around and not even go in that compartment anyways. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I just, as I was watching this, I'm like, oh, man, you got to wait for that. Like, if you just waited for that whiz tower to go down, three wall breakers had that, right? And you wouldn't have wasted 20 troop space, but whatever. Earthquake goes down. You're going to see this play out. The queen is kind of taking a hike. But the wizard here helps once he takes out that army camp. And once this elixir storage goes down, she kind of steps in here, pulls out the CC, still as planned. Everything's going to kind of go as planned still. And then she starts working on the wall, which is key because he needed that queen to go in here and start taking out this stuff before he added in the other prong of his attack. Poison is down, helping her out. Bam, bam, bam. All those skellies are done. So after this whiz tower and sweeper, I believe, go down and air defense... Um, 
literally, once these two things go down, she's going to start knocking out this wall. So you're going to see the second prong of this attack about to commence. Now, he was supposed to have wall breakers at this point, but it took him 13 wall breakers to break that wall there. Um, so he's just like, uh-oh, I hope this works out. He knows the king is going to lock. As soon as this defensive king goes down, he knows that his king is going to lock onto that queen and start whacking that wall instantly. But he's got wizards here. So there's another key point. The wizards step up and take out the queen. So really their job is done and the king does eventually get through this wall, but the queen's dead anyways, right? So he's got 18 hogs. He's going to send in a few to kind of help out uh, this section. Finally, that group gets through the wall. Uh, the queen is in there and is A-OK. -okay, you know, finally now this, this plan's back on track. And um, one of the things I've talked about is just ensuring when things do not go your way, just try and keep a level head. And figure out how you can get the plan back on track based on, you know, drop a few hogs, add an extra funnel wizard. Just don't panic, right? Don't start spamming troops because it's just going to not go your way. But Ham does a really good job here. Just very patient, gets that whiz down to break that funnel for the queen and get her in that base. Decides uh, to drop a few extra wizards behind his king there to take out that queen. Ends up just whacking him through the, through the wall and bam, it is tree stars in the bag for Hamilton. Good recovery, man with the swag in the middle. Beautiful. <clears throat> All right, I think I got one more I'm gonna rock through and we're gonna call it a day. Leo Lager, welcome back to the 2.0 family, my friend. Good to see you back in the wars, back in the clan. Uh, we did have a few people uh, that I would like to mention that have come back after uh, a little while of a hiatus. Uh, Zerds and Jamie and Leo actually all kind of came back at the same time. It was really nice to have them back. Uh, we always considered them, you know, very close family. It was pretty heartbreaking when they left. So guys, good, good to have you back. Really appreciate uh, your guys' decisions to come on over. Um, and just watching attacks like this, just beast, right? So jump spell is down. Uh, double giant bomb number one is taken care of, but oh, sorry, I forgot he brought. Um, <laughs> I was thinking of a different attack, uh, but he has this one lava hound and a bunch of balloons. He drops a few balloons here. I thought that was neat. Uh, while the giant is tanking for the loons, uh, just wants to take out these few defenses and allow the cleanup wizards to work on the outside, and then ha only has one hound. Um, but I think he does get that air defense in there. The queen has to do some work. Defensive queen is now down. Sweeper is down. He does have to send uh, in that Lava Hound very, very quickly here to take care of this Tesla farm. Uh, but you're going to see too what I'm talking about when these side-by-side -side Teslas, you watch in one second, be like one shot or two shots from a balloon here. Um, probably was a little late on the deployment because he could have had this in by now. I think he really wanted to wait for this air defense to go down, uh, even though I don't think he really had to. Um, just because you'll see how quickly all of this stuff goes down. Boom. Watch this rage. Bam. Okay, right here. Boom. Two at the same time. See you later. <laughs> if they were split up a touch, you make it a little more difficult. You buy that extra second for them to do an extra shot, whatever it takes. Anyhow, haste is in. Last air defense is down. There's literally a little section of defenses at the 3 o'clock location that he's got to worry about. The hound is going to burst at the exact perfect moment, right when those balloons get over there. It is clean up time, more or less. Beautiful. Nice three star, Leo. <clears throat> that is tree in the bag. Welcome back, my friends. All right. So good war, Invicta. Great win. Uh, nice green stripe in there. It's such a huge, huge advantage for these guys. Um, I don't even know how you did it with nine Town Hall 11 attacks coming your way. Uh, that's not an easy thing to do and definitely, you know, like look at this Hamilton Town Hall 9 70% 70% on, you know, let's check out this base here Like almost max not a max warden, but other than that max Town Hall 11 Maybe not the minus the walls, but for a Town Hall 9 to step up and get a 70% one star That is just beautiful. So you know what guys? We are on the brink here between Invicta and 2.0. We're on the brink of really, really um, getting some serious work done. Uh, if our nines are stepping up and getting 70% on very, very maxed, close to max Town Hall 11s, that is a very good sign. So just stay tuned, guys. We're uh, we're going to keep this up. We're uh, practicing away. Town Hall 10s are building and you know upgrading and practicing every single day. So we're just going to get better as time goes on. Good win, Invicta. Congrats. Uh, nice to see that one. 
Uh, Victor's got a really cool war coming up. They masked up against Power COC. Um, one of my old friends and an old Invicta member, old Invicta co-leader himself is the leader, Jay Partial. There's a lot of really, uh, really cool guys over there that I've, I've known in the class community for a long time. Zed Bear, you're over there. Who else is over there? Adam Dota Day. Good old Dota. That's that. I'm worried a little bit about him, but I'm not in the war actually for either side. I'm actually have my mini mini in that clan, so it's very funny how they matched up. Um, but it's going to be a fun war, so stay tuned for that recap, guys. That should be a good one. But I'm going to call it an afternoon. Uh, that'll do it for your wisdom from Wiser here. Just trying to help you bag that next tree star. Until then, I'm out.